here into the second verse. We'll talk about that in some depth in a moment. Uh, but for the first verse, you're starting out 8th fret into the ninth fret on the second string. I'm using my third finger. And once you're into the ninth fret, you're taking your index finger, using that to grab the 7th fret of the first string. Meanwhile, keep your keep your third finger planted down there because you're going to return immediately to that to that note for the melody. I hate to see the evening sun go down. And Okay, so as far as hearing the words, I'm always thinking about the words as I'm playing even instrumental guitar pieces. So you're grabbing that, you got the open E string, and then your one your hand is releasing the fretted, so you got all these free, and you're situating yourself 7th fret on the 5th string, 6th fret on the 4th string, 7th fret on the 3rd string. So it's an E7 chord, but it's not a bar chord, and you're not, you know, you're, you're letting some open strings ring, you're letting the, the high E and possibly the B if you want to strum through. You're letting those ring as you grab this chord underneath it. So uh, if you were to count it out, um, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. So on three, you're grabbing the bass. On four, you're strumming through on just those two. I am muting in the right hand, okay? And then you have one beat that you can take advantage of in order to rearrange your hand to get down into what I'll call the open position. It's really more like, it's an A7 chord that's more like just, uh, you know, it's like an open position with the second finger on the second fret here of the fourth string, third finger on the second fret of, of the second string. But all the other pitches are open. So what you have is three, four, one, and as you're grabbing that open fifth string in the bass, four, one, you get that whole beat to move your hand down the neck and get it in position to then grab the first note here, which you'll use as a lead in. You're gonna hammer in to the A7 chord. And it's gonna be on the and of one. It's three, four, one, and two. Okay, three, four, one, and two. getting pretty slow so that one beat was a bit rushed but talking about the mechanics of the left hand here showed you were going into the so that lick right there you're hammering in and one and, and then you're grabbing the open E string uh, meanwhile doing your thumb picking pattern underneath it and that's strings five four six four so Okay, and of course your melody is a bit syncopated. And one, and two, and three, and. And you are definitely using your pinky in the third fret of the first string to get that G. That's the dominant seventh also of the chord. And uh... okay, so you com so, okay, so you're combining those two. And then again, you have one beat to get your hand into a different position. Open fifth string, and then you're gonna be up here with a, a half bar, a partial bar, a par partial bar. Okay, so that's, uh, you want your index across the, the first, second, third, and fourth string. And you're gonna have your second finger here in the sixth fret. That would be a stock A7 shape, except for in the melody, you have what's it's the ninth of the chord, but it's going to uh, be with your pinky on the seventh fret of the E string, just in terms of actual the shape. Uh, okay, so one and two and. Okay, so pinky, release pinky, and then you just grab the note, the melody note, with your finger that's already barred down. And then your pinky is going to go to the eighth fret of the second string. 
and then you're going to release the bar to get the open E string. So. And this sort of stuff is great for strengthening the pinky as well, because guitar players, most of us, we don't use our pinky enough and it can get quite weak. But when you have to use it to play certain pieces, that's, that's really good practice. Another trick, you can put a slight bend on that G, on, I, I mean on that G note, and uh, at the eighth fret of the, of the second string. That's the dominant seventh, sounds good. Just put a little quarter tone bend in there. And again, that'll strengthen your pinky because, you know, we certainly don't bend very much with our pinkies if we use our pinkies at all. So, so, so there you are. Again, you got the open E string followed by the open E on the low six string, the bass. So it, gives, it buys you some time to, to switch into a different part of the neck. Okay, and as far as economy of motion, this is a bit relative to the guitar you're playing. Obviously, I'm playing an electric guitar, and the strings, they're, I got a, a more narrow string spacing on this guitar, but there's no need, at least on this guitar, to tax my left hand by moving the third finger into shape for a standard E the way I would normally approach that in the left hand because it's not a complete handful, but it's getting towards quite a handful on the neck there. And why do that when my second finger is already conveniently at the second fret of the fifth string and all it's got to do is flatten out and grab the second fret of the adjacent string, the fourth string, and I'm getting those two notes with one finger. So you might consider doing that also just to keep your, your hand more relaxed and, and from unnecessary motion in the left hand. So, okay, so we were coming out of a... Uh, there we are. Because also, in fact, that is a necessity I just realized playing this, breaking this down, because here you're going to need your third finger to hammer on to the second fret, and then you're going to need your pinky to grab the third fret and to pull off into the second fret. It's a triplet motion. And two and triple. So. And it's just, a, it's just a fill, it's a blues fill that Chet was playing, but you need to, yeah, definitely have that second finger grabbing down both the fifth and the fourth string in order to get that motion. Okay. Okay, and then we move on to the A again. again. So it's a repeat. It's a repeat, just like the blues. You repeat the, the first line. So it's one line repeated twice. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, what, what is the joke? The blues, it, it states a problem, then it repeats that problem, and then it resolves with a third line that fails miserably at resolving that problem. So uh, anyhow, here we are. <laughs> So the second time through when he gets to that E, it's not the triplet pull off, but it's it's pretty close, but he's he's just doing You're bending a little bit with the pinky on the third fret of the uh, of the second string. Grabbing the second fret and then on to the open on to the open B. Okay, so this has been pretty broken down and isolated now. I want to just play this so you got a context before I, I get you into the five chord. Uh, that 
that's what it would be like. And uh, then to get into the five, you want to do a partial bar at the seventh fret. And uh, you're going to go across strings four, three, and two. And you're going to use your thumb to grab the bass. Okay. That's uh, hammer on with your second finger into the eighth fret of the third string. So it's a pickup in, in the groove. It's a and one. So as you're hammering on to the eighth fret, and one, you're grabbing the uh, seventh fret in the bass. Okay. And then again, you got to switch, and you're using that open string to buy you time to get down there. And that's just a regular B7 shape. Nothing even on the sixth string. It's just all fifth string, fourth string, third string. Okay, and now we just want to move up and we're going to get to, uh, it's like a F, F sharp, seven flat nine. You got the thumb in the bass because it's going to grab the F sharp. And we got the pinky on the uh, third, third fret of the first string. So not barring anything. Uh, I'm not at least. I, I, I'm not sure exactly how Chet did it. But those were the notes. Again, I'm putting a little bit, a little bit of a bend in it. I can do that turnaround a little cleaner. There we are. That's the turnaround. So it's just the uh, second fret sliding into the fourth, and you're split between the sixth string and the third string. And the open is the high E string. So you're sliding in, then descending. So much of this stuff transfers over also. You could just take these, these tricks and put them in any blues, really, you know, as, as basic turnarounds. You know, um, so anyhow, you know, steal from the best. Anyhow. A C9 chord, and in the right hand, I'm doing that thing where I'm sort of just releasing. I don't even know exactly. Starting with, I guess, the third finger, and and just in quick succession between third, second, and first. You know, it's like a flam. If this were, you know, if I were a drummer, that's exactly what it's like. So on the C9, right? So uh. That's the whole first verse. I'll play it one more time. he goes into a double time part so you know I just played you the second verse the bridge and then the last verse but now let's talk about those in some detail <laughs> 